Typically, we tend to focus on Walt Disney's early hand-drawn animation when it comes to discussing early forms of traditional animation. These include things like Oswald Lucky Rabbit, Steamboat Willie, Snow White. However, the traditional animation that we know of did not really arrive until the 1930s, whereas stop motion has existed for about 30 to 40 years prior. Filmmakers like James Stewart Blackton, Arthur Melbourne Cooper, Emile Cole, Sergei Chaumont all began to incorporate early forms of stop motion into their shorts around 1902 and continued onwards until the outbreak of the First World War. While some of these animations are what we would consider to be crude and unrefined, nonetheless they explore and push themselves to truly get the smoothest motion, creative ideas, and truly innovative works from a variety of projects back in the day. And these ideas are something that studios today, like, so for example Leica and DreamWorks, would incorporate into their own features. But how did this all start? When did this all start? Well, we got going back to about, oh, I don't know, 18, 19, 1885. Edward Mobridge was the first to discover that by lining up a series of cameras and having one take a picture right after another in quick succession, it would result in some sort of demonstrated motion, a path, a trajectory of objects. Taken from this, Thomas Edison's own company began to go ahead and create the Kinograph camera in 1891, which truly began the first age of cinema. From their experimentalists J. Stuart Blackton and Albert E. Smith, who worked for Videograph, created the first, at least documented, form of stop motion animation in Humpty Dumpty Circus, which was released in 1898. Sadly, we don't know the true first stop motion animation to exist, as nearly 85 to 95% of all films from the silent era have sadly been lost in the sands of time, especially those of animation. This is also mostly due to many animators at the time believing themselves to be magicians who would go out of the way to hide their secrets, keep them close to themselves rather than spill it and enhance potential film for the rest of their days. Regardless, the films that we still retain to this day involving early stop motion all came around from the early 1900s, specifically around 1906 to 1912 when more people were slowly lit in on the secrets. Again, these include such filmmakers as Sergio de Chamon, Edward Porter, James Blackton, Emil Cole, and Arthur Melbourne Cooper. While looking back at some of these filmmakers, one can see a lot of copycat style of storytelling. It was a steady improvement of each anime pushing the rest into a steady state of advancement. For instance, Blackton produced a legendary short entitled The Haunted Mansion in 1907, only for a year later Chamon to release his short at a hotel electrico, which has an identical plot, but with somewhat smoother animation, but at least more creative uses of it, as opposed to Blackton's, which more or less just contained a 30 to a minute 30 long sequence of moving food. Granted, that was much smoother as opposed to Shaman's, but at the same time though, the copycat style in there was there, and they were pushing themselves to do a longer form of animation. Outside of Blackton, Arthur Melbourne Cooper made some impressive shorts featuring animation from 1907 to 1915. Melbourne Cooper made over 300 films between the years of 1901 and 1915 with his studio Alpha Picture House, with about 30 to 40 incorporating some form of animation. Some of these early shorts were Dolly's Toys in 1901 and The Enchanted Toy Maker in 1904. For some reason, the continued trend is toys with this man, but that's his life. However, both of these shorts have been lost in the sands of time, which continues to go ahead and question the validity of if they even contain stop motion whatsoever. However, despite stop motion animation growing more and more in the early 1900s, that did not mean all the films involving stop motion at the time were anything stellar. More than likely than not, filmmakers would use stop motion to get a sense of the supernatural or dreamlike state. And while some did have their own stories in these shorts, such as The Haunted Mansion, Many wish to show off the updated technique, such as Melvin Cooper's Dreams of Toyland in 1908. The film itself is remarkably a surprising amount of attention to detail and a long form shot of nothing but stop motion toys running around and just causing chaos. It's clearly a tough and notable accomplishment for the time, however there is very little story behind it. Granted, this could also have been, you know, because the short itself was meant to be fun, as a child's mind creates absolute chaos, but it would be an expanded concept in movies such as Toy Story. However, that all kind of did change in 1912, where two filmmakers took the idea to a new extreme.
1912, animators Emil Cole and Romeo Vesnani, Bosetti, Bosetti, created two different stop motion shorts involving moving furniture with almost the exact same names. Cole produced the short Mobile Fidel, or The Loyal Furniture. In this short, a man lost his possessions to the bank, but they somehow come to life and move themselves back to his home. Interestingly enough, this was also a match of collaboration with Bosetti, whom two years later would make the automatic moving company. A short about a moving company with no employees, just the furniture and equipment moving all on its own. Both of these shorts used stop motion animation throughout 95% of the rope overall runtime. And unlike, say, The Haunted Mansion or, or Dreams of Toyland, both of these shorts and animations furthered the story, if not told their own story, with the art of stop and go. It wasn't just a gimmick for these two, it was actually an advancement of art in the media. They both had relatively smooth pieces of animation at the time, a testament to the improvement of the style over the past 10 years. And while Edwin Porter's The Sculptor's Nightmare, released in 1908, had used the same stop motion and claymation for majority of the short, and also furthered the storyline, it was not nearly as smooth or as well as paced as Cole's or Basadi's. However, the silent era of stop motion continued to move forward through the 1910s before coming to a near halting stop in 1915. Due to the First World War and its financial issues involving two theater fires, Melbourne Cooper was forced to stop making animation. His family went on to own an advertising firm for where he will work for the rest of his days, ultimately retiring in 1940, never producing animation again. Blackton moved into more dramatic pictures than stop motion around 1917, but he then ended up losing everything in the stock market crash of 1929. Cole retired in 1917 as well to fight in World War I and spend the rest of his life in retirement in Paris. Germain would sadly pass in 1929, working mostly for special effects and then directing or experimentation. Although the giants of the time moved on, newcomers came in to fill their spaces. Willis O'Brien would use stop motion for dinosaurs and make a science fiction jump to even greater heights. Helena Smith Dayton was the first female animator who came to the field after World War I to adapt Romeo and Juliet for stop motion. O'Brien Dayton's advancements in claymation, smoothness, and artistic technique led to the survival of the art form. And it can be argued that 1933's King Kong, the most famous of early stop motion, was inspired by O'Brien's work on the Lost World in the use of claymation and animation. While not necessarily creating anything groundbreaking, at least to our eyes, Back in the early 1900s, these men and women went on ahead and furthered the field of animation and truly got a jumpstart on everything with the earliest known forms. If any chance, stop motion animation is your more traditional animation than you can really even think of. While it's not as flashy as say something like Snow White or Pinocchio, that doesn't mean it's nonetheless important to the overall history of animation, which I find really fascinating and just plain out cool that something that so many people think is nearly next to impossible, let alone not profitable, is what started the entire medium as a whole.